صباح الخير جود مورنينج مو صباح الورد والنور والسرور جود مورنينج حبيبي هاو ثينكس اه فانتاستيك جود تو سي يو اجين اي مان اتس جود تو سي تو اتس بين ا وايل Well, I mean, I'm seeing you every day, you know, like with 30, 30 sports and 30 days. Well, you're keeping me entertained. You know, Lebanon doesn't have access to the World Cup. They they couldn't afford to pay the, you know, the rights. So I'll watch you instead. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that I can keep you entertained for a while. Inspired is more of the word. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's really amazing. That's like. You know, watching these videos every day and uh, seeing you do that. Uh, I mean, you know, like most people are finding it difficult to get into one sport. So you just learned 30 over the last 30 days and that's already a big thing. So we'll get to that later. Um, Mo, um, you know what I got to, you know, I told you today we're going to celebrate, right? I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're celebrating 30 days in, in a row and that would be the 60th. So remember, I was celebrating with a lemon and an orange, remember, on, uh, you know, on Happiness Day, the Correct. day we first met. It was March yes. 21, Happiness Day, and we've been friends since then. Correct. And I was celebrating the launch of Reconnect, and now it's almost two years later, and we're celebrating a milestone with you. Um, so I got these with us so we can celebrate with them, remember? We were juggling. Did you go for the juggle back then? Yes. I can, I can, I can, actually, I can juggle, you know, like part of, uh, because for surfing, you need to have like really nice hand-eye coordination and juggling is really uh -huh. nice for your brain activation, right? So it just makes you like be able to, so for muscle memory and all of those things. So yeah, I can actually juggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I can do with two though. I never got to three, you know, I can do three. Good. I'm not, I'm not so bad. <laughs> you can do three, bro. I tried, I tried to do four, but I haven't got it yet, but it just needs some time. <laughs> Taib, yalla. Let, let, let's start this um so you know we, we met I, two, about two years ago and you know with, with the first binding word between us was mental strength and today again we are celebrating that mental strength to complete 30 sports in 30 days needs a lot of effort concentration you'll tell us about that um so you're you're totaled 60 today and you're planning to complete 100 different sports So my first question is, how on earth can you learn 30 sports in 30 days and become so good at them? Like watching the videos, it's like, you know, like it's like it's like watching somebody really knowing the game. At least it's basics and it's essentials. You might not be a pro at it, but how do you learn like one every day? <laughs> um, so we have to go. So basically sport is what I really like to do, right? And I've been playing sports since a younger age. And I think I have this like, like a talent of learning a new sport, but it's all about learning the basics, right? And this is something that you grow up as an athlete learning. If you want to be good at something, you have to learn the basics. And the best way to learn the basic is to listen and to be able to do what you've been told, right? In any sport, in anything that looks impossible because the, us athletes make it look impossible or like, the, or like the pros make it look so hard. Once you learn the basics, you can see it's easy. Everything in life, the basics is easy. Being pro at it takes time and takes education and it gets hard out of it. What we do as a human being, and this is something nature, right? We want to go straight to becoming millionaires before even making our first dirhams or being the first pro or like thinking about going in the Olympics and competing and being everything and not looking at the beginning and not looking at so for example if you want to play football the first thing instinct that you want to do is you want to do bicycle kick you want to do something really crazy you want to do what neymar and messi is doing but they don't know that like okay so for messi and neymar to get to where they are they had to learn how to like hold the ball in their feet run with the ball dribble. do the <laughs> they had to learn how to dribble yeah <laughs> you, learn, you learn the boring stuff right the boring stuff that nobody wants exactly. to do and if you look at like all those big athletes like you we we're, we're, like listen to like um story of uh tiger woods tiger woods with hits super short putts 100 times with his left 100 times with his right how many athletes are be able to do this or have the mind strength or the mindset to be able to hit 100 putts with the left and the right before even starting their normal training i will tell you this 99 of athletes and 99 of people will give up because They don't have the mental strength and the mental capacity that actually Tiger Woods has that can actually do this. It is a long-term yeah. thing, right? He does it because he understands the end goal and he knows where does he yeah. want to go and he knows all of those things will add up to get to where they are. And this is it. So basically, this is what I do when I'm doing my 30, my 60 sports or trying to hit the 100 sport is 
I understand that for me to be good at the sport, I need to learn the basics, the boring stuff, the thing that nobody wants to do. By doing this, and I have that mental capacity, which I trained for it, and I made my mind be able to say, like, all right, cool, it looks boring, but this is good for this is for the good for the greater good, right? So that means I actually do the basic and I do the basics really well. Hence, in the videos, it looks I make it look good and I make it look easy. In fact, it's not because right. you have to be you have to fight because you want to do those crazy stuffs that you want to try. You want to be able to showcase the, all of the good things about it. But you cannot, right? You have to do it easily and small and all of those things. So you have to fight with your yeah. with your head internally. You have to fight with yourself and say, like, no, I'm not doing this. And it is a struggle, but nothing comes easy. You, you know, Morris, it's really interesting because, you know, when, when we speak about that, you know, learning the basics, you know, we, we speak about mental strength. One of the rules of mental strength, it's called the 10 minute rule. And, and the lit literally 10 minute rule means if you really wanted to understand something in its basics just give it 10 minutes of your attention right yeah. attention as you know learn it from somebody else um you know get online whatever the methodology is and, and and you know like while yes a lot of people many people dream to be athletes and professional athletes yet we are facing like a, a you know a wide scale phenomena of lack of movement and limiting beliefs where we say oh i cannot play the sport i don't have time Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But th but then that ten minute rule is so transformational. Look at you doing thirty days, um, uh, thirty sports in thirty days. That means you're learning one new sport every day. And it literally probably took, you know, the first ten minutes of you know attention. So thank you for inspiring us to, to to uh, you know, to see it that way. That it's not so difficult. You don't need to be a professional athlete to pick up a new sport. How do you feel about completing the challenge? Happy. Um, it is something that <laughs> it is something that I always say, right? And that is something I think I also spoke about it when we did the uh, the awareness day and the happiness day that we had with reconnect. Um, I talk about we have to celebrate everything we do in life, right? The small celebration actually um, makes you addicted to celebration, which is goes to the bigger celebration, right? Like even though now I'm, my aim is hundred. I still celebrate finishing 10 days, five days. I do those small celebrations because these are the ones that drives me for the big celebration. And those becomes an addiction. This yeah. becomes like an addiction. Like there's something that you crave later on. It's like, oh, I miss this, right? And even like small things, right? Like even a small celebration as like, if you finish something, you go like, yes. You just feel like, yeah, yeah. like you feel, you feel, you feel like the blood pressure, like the blood is like going through your heart. Your heart is pumping faster. I didn't do nothing, right? I all, all I did was just like claim it. Go like, yes. That's why football players yeah. score like a thousand goals and they still celebrate, right? Why do they celebrate? Because they get addiction. They get that addict, like that, that thing inside you that you really want it. That's like what they call yeah. endorphin or happy hormone or whatever it is that just pumps through your vein, right? If you suppress it, yeah then it never comes out. So yeah. if you do something really big and you actually don't claim it, even if something is small and you don't claim it or you don't yeah. like actually celebrate it, then it's suppressed. Then what happens is there's nothing excites you anymore. Then you don't, you, you, there's nothing for you to chase. There's nothing you, uh, what they yeah. call it, like, um, you don't know the taste of it. So you don't know the taste of winning. No, I, I read something yesterday. It says, if you're not content with where you are, you will never be content uh, in where you're going. So if you're someone who doesn't like celebrate that daily, you know, and, and, and like that whole, I, I will tell you a personal experience. So I work with Red Bull, right? And work with athletes. What you are doing is something we used to plan for, for months, right? And it would be, we would celebrate it at such a big achievement, you know, an athlete project, you know, it, it succeeded from the content, it succeeded from the reach, it succeeded from whatever message it needs to be delivered. And now that's become the norm. And so, so, so it's sometimes even difficult to self-congratulate ourselves when we're surrounded by that social media that's showing everyone only at their kind of in, in their best. So first, I think, um, you know, like, uh, you, you, you know, my story, I, um, and, and in healing from mental illness, I think one of the main components and a lot of psychologists and mental health speak about it is gratitude and counting our blessings, celebrating our daily successes. And then and, and that keeps us aligned with ourselves and our purpose and, you know, who we are and who we want to be. 
and I wanted to like make this a point today because you know for me you know Voss came in and, and jumped in and supported us for and I'm super grateful for them because you know I mean I, I would have been not watching football and not watching you probably <laughs> but but then I got I got to watch you on for 30 days but but you know it started before even Voss supporting and, and, and jumping in but I know you work with a team and you work part of you function as part of a country and a system and with a vision and um, yeah, what are you gra- what are you grateful for today? In this, you know, uh, when you complete these twenty days. So first of let's all, let's celebrate. So let's be grateful. So, so first <laughs> of all, I, I'm super grateful for my wife. So my wife has been huge support, and God bless her. You know. When did you get married? We got married in. Uh, <laughs> so we had Ken Kitab in March. Okay. Okay, but we had our wedding in July. So this is where we went for our honeymoon. Because I was still mentally setting you up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! So, 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 so many reasons to celebrate this year. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, so it's only been re- only been like three months. So she's getting into it, seeing my crazy life, and God bless her for keeping it up. So she's 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 my Absolutely. team, right? For now, she's my team. She's doing all my edits, and that's why she makes me look good. So I do the oh, I do the wow. I do the I do the sports. She does the filming, and she does the edit out of the film. And so basically, we work in as a team. So it's me and her for now. This is the this is the Mo Rahma team, and uh, I think. Oh, well, I'm looking for someone to look me good, to make me look good. Sorry, I'm looking for someone to make me look good. This is why we are here. No, this is why we're collaborating, <laughs> right? So reconnect. So reconnect. Tell me about life. This is a no, okay, that's right? amazing. That's amazing because... to have support from your partner, you know, and for her to be part of your team. I mean, isn't that why we choose to be with people that enrich us? So congratulations. Exactly. I'm so happy for you to hear that. And, and also, we're, and also yeah, I hope you always have a solid team. Thanks, Harry. And this is what we're trying to also do, is trying to also teach her that, okay, we're doing this, we've done this, we're celebrating. So we're doing like those celebratory milestones that she's not used to it before. And I'm telling you, if we never did this, I don't think she would be able to continue and complete what we're doing because and what we're doing is intense. She has full-time job, we have family, we have friends, we have so many things happening, taking like two hours out of your time, learning a new camera. So we got like we got like one of our um one of like the cameras sponsors that actually like want us to test out the camera. So we'll be shooting with this yeah. camera for the whole time as a as a Insta360 and learning a new camera during the during the sports itself is not easy for her. So I know we go to bed at like 12 a.m. We wake up early for like 7 a.m. to go to, we actually 6 a.m. to go to work. We finish work, we come back home, we change, we go to play the sport. So oh it's not God. easy for her, right? So this is, a lot of people would actually quit halfway or like actually wouldn't be able to commit to it or do it because we do have breaking points, right? Like we're still humans. We still have those urges to say like, okay, you know what? We're quitting. What's the point of doing this? There's nothing to do it. So I'm trying to teach her also. We're doing those things. We're doing the, the small wins or the small like for me doing the 30 sports now is not a big achievement it's for me is hitting the 100 but for her the 30 is a huge thing that like she's never done this before or like continuously doing something for yeah. 30 days so we've done the same thing with her so every 10 days we celebrate either we go out for dinner or we just make sure that we are actually happy that we have done those 10 days i'm trying to show mm-hmm. her how it's done so now it becomes that when we go to eight, day eight, she's excited for day 10 because then she wants to celebrate the end of it, right? And now that we are done, yeah. we're going to do a bigger celebration, hopefully the day. So today we're going to be our last sport. We're going to travel the same day straight off to Barcelona and we're going to be celebrating in Barcelona as our like actually achieving those 30 days that we set our mind to, never skipping a day, mm-hmm. um, committing for it 100%, doing what we actually intended to do, which is play the sport and actually edit the video and post the, day, yeah. the video the same day. So doing all of those things in one day is not, it's very challenging. And especially not having a team to organize everything, prepare everything. Mm-hmm. So I am teaching her this and it has worked and it has been working. And you can see everything has changed and we're getting closer. She now understands me more. She knows what she's getting into now, right? Like she knows that her life is not going to be as easy as before because she married a oh guy like me. <laughs> But but you know the concept of reciprocity. So maybe one day she's gonna do a two month journey and say, "Mo, I did it for you in the past. It's time for you to pay back." <laughs> I don't mind. You know, she's been very supportive, so it's not gonna be a payback. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a joy. You know, it's gonna be something that I would do it from my heart, whatever it is. Absolutely, bless you. <laughs> bless you. That's the right attitude for sure. Um, you know, like 
there's the saying that it's, it usually applies a lot to brands um and also i think to athletes a lot which is and and, and it's actually a common used statement is know your why so uh why did you do this challenge why why do you why do you do it so i've been i've been through i've, I've been i've been in the hunt of searching of happiness of, of the, just like how to be happy right and what makes you happy so why i am doing this is for me i saw that being happy is helping other people i can easily give money to people and do things like this but then this is only a temporary fix for them so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to go mass i'm trying to actually spread it as much as possible and spread the joy as much as as further as possible right for me what brought me what brought me joy was sport for me what got me out of bad places and I, i've shared my story with you and reconnect before and i've gone through a lot of ups and downs and my downs were like super low what got me out of this sport and i want to give this gift to other people <laughs> i want to give <laughs> i want to give we're the queens gift. of drama <laughs> <laughs> we're the queens of drama when it comes well it's great that we talk about it right it's men's mental health uh, month by the way so i think you know we we we, we choose to share our stories especially on the mental uh, side so thank you for that so yeah I'll, I'll give it back to you but you know men's mental yeah, health it's, as it's well the biggest thing, but this is something i'm going to talk about later on but so it is a platform for me for me sport has saved my life for me sport I, in, you know us as an arab we grew up in the uae grew up with the arab families we never had this opportunity to open up and express ourselves either to our parents or friends they look they look, look at that weirdo looks at crazy people all of those right so for me i found sport sport got me out of bad places in life for sports is the one that picked me up so i want to give this joy or this present to the world and i want to show people hey listen a sport is not just a sport for you to be fit a sport is so many benefits out of it it's good for your mental health it's good for you to meet new people and all of those things actually get you in a better place right if you are down and you're alone it's not good for you if you are down and have nothing to do that's not good for you it's not good for anybody else so sport gets you out of your comfort zone the sport gets you active the sport gets you healthy the sport makes you meet new people like i met some amazing cultures on playing those sports right i played from Aussie rules football to Irish rules football i met like americans and all, so there are the, and everybody's open everybody is super happy you can see those endorphin pumping through their blood so i want to do this i don't like to run long distance absolutely hate it i cannot go to the gym absolutely <laughs> hate it so i'm just showing the world listen everybody has a skill nobody in this world doesn't have a skill okay you need to find what one works for you because once you find what works for you then it is never going to be a hassle to wake up early morning it's never going to be something like you cannot do anymore because then you start having passion then you start loving the sport then you start going for the love of the sport or for the love of the community or for the love of the of how does it make you Absolutely. feel so you have to find it is in a skill you're good with your hands you're good with your feet you're good with your head you're good with your whatever it is right there is a sport for this that's why my body is in 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 such a pain because i'm using so many different muscles that my body is also confused saying like okay come on because when you play one sport you're using you activating one muscle group and then your muscle get used to it but now when you play a different sport you're activating all the different muscle groups yeah. so that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to showcase we have a variety of sports there's so many activities there is so many things you can do and you just have to find what works for you what doesn't work for you and this is something that we want to build up for the future right we want to build up something to see like okay what's next because when i used to be a kid if you're not good at football then you never play sport then you become fat you watch tv you sit in front and then this is where all the depression and everything comes in because then you're not going out you're not doing anything because you're not good at football but this doesn't mean that you're not good at sport it doesn't mean you're not good at anything else no it doesn't mean there's so many things you can do and this is what we're trying to do and this is what we're trying to that's that's why i'm doing it more mo, you know something you said something about you know growing up in the uae in this arab culture well you know i think it was a different time but and, and i like to always stress the evolution of the uae because i think to a great extent because of you and others and and including a national level strategy to focus on health and wellness in sports which will i say is manifesting now or unfolding in the form of a uae 10 year vision called uae wellness strategy 
And, you know, we see the Dubai Fitness Challenge as part of it. We see this infrastructure for sports, Formula One, horse riding, all sorts of sports. And, and, and don't, don't you think now the UAE culture is convinced that sports and health and wellness is a career path and a opportunity for their children? Because, I mean, UAE is inspiring on that front and I'm sure it had its cultural impact. So while you... While you wanting to be an athlete 20 years ago might have been looked at uh, culturally and, you know, um, I would say from a career perspective is what are you doing, son? But I think now it's changed. And how right. does that influence you feel the country and its culture? It has changed. It's changed dramatically and it's changed. I can see the changes that's happening in there. And it is growing. It's, we're not there yet. We're not like we cannot compare with the Western world. We cannot compare to other. But the the jump is huge and i can see those um changes and also like as i said like even with wellness and even with like mental health and also with all of those things and you can also see like there's associations like i've been suffering with ibd for the last 15 years and in the last five years now there's an association for ibd for people to understand for like money to meet so it is actually growing. You can see yoga is getting into like, and also meditation is going into like government sectors, in schools. Before we never had this, right? So it is growing. Absolutely. It is getting there. And it is, and the projection of it is looking so bright and it's going so well. And I'm talking about, because when I said about sport, I'm like 35 years old now. So, was, yeah. so before all of those things, right? So, but, but, but you know, when you say the future is bright and you're involved in it, and I don't think, you know, the career of an athlete then ever needs to um, end you know at 35 which is the biological age of slowdown and you know there are so many um, athletes that are influenced in particularly sports development and these are some of the best athletes um, you know the best athletes are in my opinion are the ones who are always giving back to Correct. that growth of their communities tell me about your because you do have an amazing athlete development program and you do have a vision as well, which is in line, I think, to a great extent with where that, you know, national vision is going. So exactly. where, where, where does Morahma stand in that equation? What does he have to offer? So this goes back to my why, right? Why am I doing this and why I am? Because then you have this, so sometimes you have the self-realization is like, okay, what are we doing here as a human being? Like, why, why am I here? Am I just yeah. like a number? Or we are trying for men something big, right? If you look at our life, you look at our success, you look at where have I been to where I am now, right? It's an inspiration. Us as a human, we like to look at other people's story and say like, I thought my life was bad. Look at this guy and look at where, where they have reached, right? So currently I'm working on a big project. Um, we cannot disclose it yet. We're still looking for investors, but it's going to change a lot of things is going to change the sporting industry in this country is going to change the level of the performance in the Arab world and is going to change actually not even in the Arab world it's going to change in the whole entire world right in the UAE we have an amazing location it's in the middle of everywhere it's super safe so people can send their kids here to actually improve their sport performance so it's going to be a lot about sport performance and it's going to be somewhere that people can come, kids, older kids. So basically we want to go improve and improve the performance out of it. And so this is something I'm working on. And again, this is, I'm doing it because I want to help people. I want to help people achieve their mm -hmm. dreams and I want people to reach their ultimate goals. Because for me, as I said before, right, if I give someone money, then that money will go away and that money only helps that person. If I open this center and I help an athlete to win, let's say, an Olympic medal, then that person will live for life. It's going to support his kid, his family from this. And then his family is going to be supported. And then their kids and the next generation from that is going to be thanked. His country is going to be proud of him. The people who are supporting the sport will be happy. Mm -hmm. So we are targeting a bigger impact than what we think. We not I'm not doing this for the money. I'm not doing it for anything else. I'm doing it for to make sure that I've been given a life that I've been through it, and I think I've been given the life I've been given because I am strong and I actually can go out of it. So I can teach people, and I always like this. They're saying like, we are here to help each other get home, right? And this is yeah. with, from the years and years of our ancestors as we are developing it, we're getting better, we're helping each other to get where I want. And I wanted to be contribute to this. I want to be able to contribute for the next generation to come. I know I'm not going to see the fruit of the of the plant, of the seed I'm planting right now, but I know that the plant that I'm going to be growing 
it's going to help the next generation. They can either sit in the shadow of it or eat from the food out of it, right? This is what I want to do. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing the sport challenge. This is why we're going to the next level. Mal, I'm, I'm honestly like literally, you, you know, I'm, I, I, I hate to say it and I love to say it. You know, the UAE has been, you know, and Dubai in particular has been the home of WeConnect. And I can definitely validate what you say is that you, you know, I validated in terms of inspiration. It's amazing to be in a place that has inspired its people to be inspiring to others.